I promised you a nice little story to uh, end with, with, which is a teaser of what comes in the rest of the course. The rest of the course, we're going to do statistics, real statistics. We start out with numbers, we did probability, now we're going to join things into statistical thinking and statistical um, approaches, statistical doing, statistical inference. Two things are given to us. I already told you, I showed you the cancer cellular phone story. In the abstract of this scientific paper, the word confidence interval was given as a way to put uncertainty into play when we look at numbers. Conf confidence intervals is one of the big tools we're going to use. The other one is hypothesis testing. Hypothesis testing is a decision-making support system you can make. That's when you're forced to make a decision uh, about whether you believe one or the other. Maybe you want to act in one or the other way. Here's a stupid little story that should reflect this idea. Now, assume that you want to buy some sand. Your wife told you to make a new terrace out there, and uh, you want to make her happy. So you want to go buy some sand. You take your trailer. I'm from Jutland. I have my trailer. Um, I go to a place, and I buy some sand. I put some sand on uh, my trailer. I go back. I ask the guy out there on the countryside to, to give me a specification of his product of sand. Uh, I'm worried about the, the amount of uh, sort of stupid stones in the sand, sort of big stones that ruin things for me. Can you specify your, your product? Can you tell me what's the situation regarding the stones in the sand? Uh, he says, well, here's my specification. On average, it's only half a stone per, uh, per cubic meter. What's the English term for a rom meter, cubic uh, meter? Cubic, cubic meter would be, yeah. Um, so one per two cubic meter. That's the amount of stones you would ex you, you, this sand is uh, having. Now, I buy 10 cubic meters sand. Then I start playing around. I get into trouble. I see, really, when I look at my sample of sand that I bought, I had 11 stones in this sand. 11 stones. Was he cheating on me? Was he having a wrongful specification of his product? Should I go back and complain? Should I write to ombudsman? There's a lot of uh, that type of uh, uh, cases in the US, claim support cases, mostly in the US going to court. But it's big and huge business where people claim something and then other people uh, go into court with them to see if they can live up to the claims. I had a hand up here. What would you say? Well, yeah, of course, I only expected five stones. You say you only expect five? I do agree, yes. But the guy, he said that on average, it's, uh, his claim would, would be right. So if there was a million customers or whatever, he might be right. So I, I wouldn't take his uh, hiding to court, but I would maybe be a little bit disappointed. But you would be disappointed you wouldn't take him to court? Maybe. I would do a bit of calculation before I made my decision whether I should take him to court or not. And of course, it's difficult to take him to court if we didn't agree on the, uh, of our risks when I did the agreement with him, when I bought the sand. What is the risk in your statements here? What is the risk levels? What distribution would we think of here? First of all, if we should try doing a bit of probability, having letting probability help us in making this decision. This is a hypothesis test. Is the claim correct or is it not correct? This is like when we test medical treatments. Does this cancer treatment has an have an improved effect or does it not? Right? That's the thinking here. We need some probability to, to sort of relate to this. What is the situation? Number of stones in sand? Poisson, I would say, right? We count stones in a volume of, in a, in a, in a, in a kind of bunch of sand. So I would say what the proper model for this would be Poisson. The lambda that he claims is uh, the one that is the true lambda, right? That, that is the claim of the guy would be, why not take it as a 10 cubic meter lambda, 
that is the five, the expected five, as was so rightly uh, given by um, the guy up here in the back. Um, we expect five. Now, we actually observed, we actually observed 11. And I, I, I ask again, do we feel cheated? What is the probability we should calculate to sort of try to really f convince ourselves? Do, is this okay or is it not okay? Is it a, is it a fair deviation from, from his statement or is it very unlikely deviation? I'm trying to talk myself into the probability, which I believe is the relevant. That could be different probabilities you could compute. The one that reflects statistical hypothesis thinking, which is used throughout in science uh, globally around the world, this way of thinking, um, is the following. The probability, I believe, that is the relevant one to choose is if I have a Poisson with... If I have a Poisson with this uh, lambda equal to 5, let me do this uh, notation, what would then the probability be that such a lambda goes all the way up to 11 or beyond? Would you follow me just a little bit that that could be at least be an interesting probability to calculate, right? What would the probability really be, given that his claim is correct, right? We take his claim as the sort of the basis for our way of thinking. If what he claims is correct, how likely or unlikely is it to hit 11? I mean, I already hit 11. I cannot change that. I'm going to have a feeling of the likeliness, the probability, the chance of getting there. That is what's going to help me in finding out whether he is cheating on me or not, right? So I need to find this probability. Let's find it in R right away to get the answer. What is 1 minus P pi? So we have to be, now it's the discrete well, so we have to be strict here. We should take that's 1 minus P being less than or equal to 10, right? We have to be strict on this uh, equality signs here. One minus p pi is taken in ten with a lambda of five, right? The result is one point three seven percent. I ask you again, do you feel cheated? I felt cheated the first time around too. I would have to buy some more sand, I guess, to, to see if... You're right, you could, that, that would, that's a nice argument. You want to be more certain. However, let me tell you, the global definition of the level of where we feel cheated, that's 5%, most often used. When you, any time you read something in the newspaper that something was statistically significant, that they found a treatment effect of some cancer treatment or something else, an effect of a risk effect of cellular funds or something, that means that a probability, probability like this went below 5%. What we have found is that if what he claims is true, and it's, it can be a bit of challenging uh, thinking, but we have, you have a couple of months now to get used to this way of thinking. Um, if his claim is correct, what actually happened, that that's maybe, I mean, only could happen with one out of 100 cases. So what happened would only happen in one out of 100 cases. If he's true, well, if, it, if this becomes a very rare event, given that he's true, then my conclusion at the end would be, then he cannot be true. I mean, if, this, if, if I'm in a very unlikely situation given his statement, I don't believe that's the case. I more would say that leads me to the decision that he's wrong and I could take him to court, right? That's hypothesis testing. 
And that's one of the tools that we're going to do the rest of the course together with confidence intervals. When we look at numbers, I looked at the number 11 and made a decision using probability calculus and using statistical thinking. I made a decision about the real life here based on the number 11. That's what we're going to do rest of the course, right? Good. Sorry for the little uh, technical problems and hope you'll have a nice day anyhow. So see you next week.